Now we are going to start chapter 20, the cardiovascular system, the actual heart. The heart is a pulmonary circuit. It carries blood to and from gas exchanging surfaces of the lung. Whereas the systemic circuit is the area that carries blood to and from the rest of the body. Blood alternates between the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Let's review quickly. When you hear the word pulmonary, I want you to remember lungs. Pulmonary means lungs. The systemic circuit is specifically talking about the heart and the blood vessels and every organ that the blood is traveling to. There are major types of blood vessels. You have arteries, which carry blood away from the heart. Notice A stands for away. Veins carry blood to the heart. And capillaries, these are the smallest, smallest type of blood vessels. They can go anywhere they want. They can go in and out of arteries and veins. They don't need a license to go anywhere. Um, now, let's remember this. Veins carry deoxygenated blood, which means when you run an exercise, you lose the oxygen carrying capacity from the hemoglobin. Thence, they are called veins. Arteries have already received the blood from the lungs, and they are called oxygen-rich blood. So make sure you know the difference between arteries and veins and the type of blood they carry. This is on your test. Capillaries also exchange um, small matters at the smallest um, the vesicular transportation. They are very small. They can, they can basically go between, like we said, exchanging between blood and the tissue itself. Uh, they're made up of dissolved gases. They carry nutrients and they can carry out waste products. This is a great picture. Pause this picture, I mean, pause the video right now and please study this picture. The pulmonary circuit on the left and the systemic circuit on the right. As you see how blood circulates between the heart, the organs, and the lungs, this is what this is all about. Notice that the capillaries in the lungs then send through to the right atrium of the heart, the right ventricle, and we go to get the oxygen from the lungs. We then return to the left atrium, to the left ventricle. The left ventricle takes everything out to the rest of the body. We'll talk about this in detail later. The four major chambers of your heart. The top two are called the atrium. The bottom two are called the ventricles. Before you even look at this page, listen to me. The, rate, the atriums on the top. These are the muscular chambers of your heart at the top portion that accepts blood, okay? The difference is the right atrium gets the bad blood, which is deoxygenated. The left atrium gets the good blood returning from the heart, which is oxygenated. The bottom two chambers are called ventricles. Ventricles pump the blood to the heart and the rest of the body. I'm sorry. Ventricles plump, pump blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. So let's talk. Number one. The right atrium collects the blood from the systemic circuit, then it goes through the valves into the right ventricle. The right ventricle then will pump it out to the uh, lungs, and the lungs will then return it, oxygenate it, into the left atrium. The left atrium then pumps into through the uh, by, by cuspids into the left ventricle. The left ventricle is so important. You cannot have any love without LV, left ventricle. Why do I say this? Of these four chambers, your left ventricle is the largest, most muscular area of the heart. It is the most powerful pumping section. Why? The oxygenated good blood must get to the rest of your body, otherwise you will die. Some conditions called sudden death or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy results from having a too enlarged left ventricle, which causes people to actually pass out when playing basketball or running a marathon or any sport, and they can actually die from a heart attack because that ventricle is too large, and because it's too large, it doesn't allow the blood that holds the oxygen to fill up and go to the rest of the body. Your heart has a superior network of veins and arteries. Um, the pointed tip is the apex, the bottom is the apex. It's surrounded by a pericardial sac, or the tissue, and it sits between two pleural cavities in the mediastinum. The mediastinum is your um, sternum area. Remember we talked about the manubrium, the, um, the body and the xiphoid process, that is the center of your chest, the mediastinum. Take a look at this picture, pause it, make sure you know this will be on your test, make sure you are able to identify. Looking here, the lungs are parallel, the heart is tightly closed inside between the lungs and it's sitting right there in between your two nipples or your breast uh, plates. 
This is a um, sagittal, I'm sorry, this is a transverse cut. If somebody cut your body in half from top to bottom transverse, you can see how all the lungs and the heart and all the muscles work together and where they're positioned. All right, um, the atria we talked about is a thin walled area and it expands to the auricle. Um, this will not be on your test. Just know the atria is plural for atrium, which accepts the blood. This picture will be on your test. Let's study this. Top left, we have the common carotid artery, uh, the brachiocephalic trunk. This is all a part of the aorta. The aorta is the largest artery in the human body, or the human heart in this case. Uh, blood that is deoxygenated will travel into the right superior vena cava. It will travel then into the right atrium. In between the cuspids, it will enter the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, this deoxygenated blood will get out of the pulmonary artery into the lung. The lungs will then turn that blood into rich oxygenated blood, which returns to the heart through the pulmonary vein. From the pulmonary vein, that rich blood enters the left atrium, travels through the cuspid valves into the left ventricle, the most important chamber. From there, the left ventricle pumps all that oxygen out to the human body through the aorta, and that is systemic circulation. This is a gross anatomy picture of the heart. This is a real human heart found in a dead body after the person deceased and uh, donated their body to science. So pause the picture and take a look at it and see the difference in a true anatomy picture. This is the heart from the opposite side. So now you're able to see really the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the left ventricle. Um, you see there's fat around your heart. Of course, you don't want to have too much fat around your heart, right? Not a good thing. This is the location of your heart in between the chest plates. Study this. All right, let's talk about the wall of the heart. Just like every organ, there's layers to things. And in this case, a muscular layer of all of the heart. The epicardium is the outer muscle layer of the heart. The myocardium is the middle layer, M for middle. And the deepest N, as you all know, the prefix endo always means inside. The endocardium is the third and deepest layer of the heart muscle tissues. The epicardium, again, is the visceral pericardium. It covers the majority of the heart. This is the outer layer. The myocardium is the middle layer. Um, it's concentrated for the cardiac muscles to pump blood. There's two divisions of it. The endocardium is the smallest, or the, uh, the most simple squamous epithelium. It is the deepest inner layer of the blood, where blood actually touches. This is a cross-sectional picture of all of these tissues. Um, take a good study at it. You might remember some of this from the previous tissue lectures we had. Again, this is just a quick uh, circular pattern of how muscle striated or muscles look on the heart. Intercalated discs are basically a part of the muscle tissue. Um, what they are is they are very small chains that connect the muscle tissue to one another. And this is what it looks like here. If you look at the, uh, the different types of spindles, the myofibrils, the very small uh, detailed layers of the heart. This, again, you've seen this before when we study all different types of tissues of the heart. This is a cardiac muscle tissue, and like a force, this is what it looks like. And the intercalated discs are the little lines that are connecting the actual cells of the heart. The characteristics of the cardiac muscle cells includes, number one, they're quite small in size. They are single, and they have a central nucleus. They branch interconnections between the cells. And number four, they have intercalated discs. So these are the four major characteristics of all cardiac muscle cells. This will be on your test. Check this. The interventricular, I'm sorry, interventricular septum is on your test. This is the wall that separates the ventricles from the atria. This helps to separate the majority of the chambers in between the heart. Okay, make sure you know this. Um, the the antro, atrial ventricular valves, okay, basically connect from one portion to another. Um, this is basically the valves that connect the atriums to the ventricles. Now, blood travels through the superior vena cava, okay, receives blood from the head, neck, and upper bodies. The inferior vena cava receives the blood from the lower section of the body, so blood coming from your legs, your thigh, your butt, it's coming through the inferior vena cava. All right, um, this is a great picture. Please pause this video and watch and look at the different detailed uh, parts of the heart. This is a picture of the human anatomy heart. Um, it is a real heart cut in half. Uh, go ahead and study this, please. All right. The right ventricle. 
Um, now we are on the bottom right side. Remember, the right ventricle or any ventricle is what allows the actual uh, contraction or pumping of the blood out. The right atrioventricle valve, also known as a tricuspid valve, this is the opening from the right atrium into the right ventricle. It has three flaps, and this is so important, this is on your test, it prevents backflow. Please highlight tricuspid valve. This is found on the right side of your heart, and when blood enters through the first to the second chamber, this keeps blood from backflowing, okay, which is really bad. You don't want blood traveling back out to where it came from. It can cause a heart attack. The trabecular carnae is the muscular ridges of the internal surface of the heart. Basically, when we cut the heart later in the lab, you will see that there are these smooth mountain-like ridges. Trabecula is the mountain-like ridges of the heart. Remember that. 